Got it. Okay, it's just allowing everything to boot up. I'm gonna check attendance. Well, yeah, let me let me check one more time because I know. Well, <laughs> I think I'm gonna still do my 15 minute mark thing just to be consistent. How is that? That's not connected. Here, done, and screen share. Okay, start the broadcast. Ooh, that was an adventure. Okay. Yeah. Took a little bit, but we got in there. Uh, let's see, so welcome scholars. Uh, I think this is the end of, do we have our exam next week? I think it's next week, right? Um, let me check on Pearson. Let's, let's hop over to Pearson. And can we see the assignments? Let's do the manage view actually, because I can see more there. Hello. Today is the 25th, right? Yeah, All right. So exam two is available on March 2nd. I think this is upcoming Wednesday, All right? So it'll be available starting next Wednesday uh, and it'll be due the following Wednesday. And you know, it's the same same rules apply, unlimited attempts. You can work on any assignment past the due date uh, with a 10% late penalty. And just as a reminder, there is a hard deadline for all assignments of May 1st, All right? Let's pretend this one more time. Okay, look at this. Let's see, so exam, exam two is gonna be focused uh, specifically on chapter three, right? So everything, chapter three. So, um, and, and, and again, even once, it, once you have access to the exam, even during class time specifically, and especially during class time, you can ask me questions about anything, right? Because you get unlimited attempts, and usually the way I make my online exams, they're like, I do pools. So like when you take it once, you get a score. If you want to improve that score, you can take it again, but it's going to give you completely different questions. Uh, the same content, but different questions, right? So if you understand the content, you can you can keep up with the changes. Um, so I'm helping you, like if you ask a question, we can talk about it. Uh, okay, so with that, and again, if anything is not clear, if you have questions, also, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Also, like if you email me, I still encourage you to email me. More than likely, I won't respond to the email. The best thing is just to email me just to have it on file and then just ask me during class time. Uh, because, I, and I do that intentionally. Um, I just do it intentionally. Because again, the, the original intent of class time is for it to be a Q&A slash a study session. I just kind of go through lectures and homework just to fill the dead air. Uh, my experience in the past is it was like pulling teeth to get students to talk. So instead of wasting everybody's energy and time. That's why I do it the way that I do it. Uh, in the past, I used to try to force people to do it and it was just a, a lot of wasted energy on both ends of the, of the thing. So instead of wasting people's energy, you know how my setup is. So with that, um, we're gonna go ahead and look at, work through as many homework questions as we can from section 3.4, um, okay? All right, so this is the first question. Oh, and again, if anything is not clear, or if you have questions or comments about anything, again, feel free to unmute yourself and we can talk about it. And also we can do like private rooms if you need to like, if you don't want it to be either streamed on YouTube or not talked about with, with your classmates, we can do a private room as well. Okay, here we're asked to solve for X, right? So this, this section is on exponential and logarithmic, logarithmic equations. Uh, if we can get, we have this six to the power of X equals this 1296, right? So if we can get the right-hand side to be another exponential expression of the same base, then we can just compare their, their exponents. So I'm pretty sure that's a perfect power of six. So what I'm gonna do, that was a sentence for you, perfect power of six, Peter Pepper, pick a peck of pickle peppers. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, let's open this up. We're gonna open up our trusty, dusty, rusty calculator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's do let's do six. Let's see, thirty-six times thirty-six. Nine. Let's do six to the power of five. Let's see what that does. Six to the power of four. Four is that <clears throat> twelve ninety six, right? So six to the power of x equals six to the power of four. So then once you once you have that set up, if I need to write that out, let me know. But I, I feel like it should be clear that x equals four, right? And um, if I'm moving too fast or if I need to go back or write something, just stop me. Uh, absolute value of x. Okay. So is that a perfect power? No. Let's take some notes here. Let's take some notes. This is fine. Let's do this. This is fine. Let's just go with this. Yes. My man, my man, ready to rock and roll. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to pitch this. I'm going to try to offer this to as many students as I can. So this is an Easter egg. If you're on the line now, if you're paying attention, if you hear me say this, or if you get this message and you follow through with it, I'll be open to some kind of compensation. So you know, we've been talking about, you know, whatever we've been talking about, exponentials and logs, right? I consider myself a gamer, right? Um, can you take like one of the sections that we've been discussing, either a section or a concept, and bring it to life either like, um, like either through a video game or something of your passion, right? Like what I mean, for instance, an example, I'm a gamer and I'm always like, okay, I have this, this, this knowledge base of math, now, how can I take that and apply it to this game to, to do better at this game? Or if you wanted to apply it to whatever it is that you like, say you're a dancer, how can you take what we've been discussing and apply it to something that you love, right? And um, so, and to sweeten the deal, what I want you to do is like take it, apply it, do some research and let's kind of go back and forth with it on a little bit. Um, but then I want you to create a, a YouTube short, no longer than, I think, the, I think they got either 15 seconds or 60 seconds, so no longer than 60 seconds, right? You create a YouTube short, you can have maybe no more than three people in a group. Uh, take, take one of the concepts we've been talking about and apply it to something that you love, either gaming or dance or music or, uh, uh, you know, some, like a web design or something like that. But take something that we've been discussing and apply it, like bring it to life. For instance, uh, we've been talking about exponentials, so the things that behave in an exponential fashion. Okay, like there could be like a, there's that tank game where maybe you can do some kind of some kind of calculations or something uh, where you you know you're shooting over an obstacle trying to hit your target. Oh, that's so bad. Now I'm thinking about um, Russia and Ukraine. Like, uh, but but take but take something that we've been talking to see can you bring it to life either in something that you love, right? And create a YouTube short, no more than three people in a group, uh, but kind of go back and forth with me before you, you know, we have the final presentation. Uh, and if we if we showcase yours in class, I'll judge it. You know, we'll see what well, we can, I'll be open to some kind of uh, extra credit. I don't know if it's gonna be substantial, um, but something, all right? It'll be more than nothing. I don't know how much, I hadn't decided. But it's, I just wanna see what you guys can do. Like, can you make and create? And I just wanna, encourage you to create things, right? Okay, so now with this one, we have the following. Let's start, let's start by taking some notes. So we have this eight to the power of absolute value of X equals 128. Now I don't think that 128 is a perfect square. For instance, we said eight to the power of three, right? And that's too much, right? So we can get these both to a base of two, right? Eight, Eight is what? Two to the power of three. So that's gonna be two to the power of three to the power of absolute value of X, okay? 
128, let me see, five is 32, six is 64, 128, so two to the power of seven. So 128 should be two to the power of seven. Let me just check that really quickly. All right. So then now on the left-hand side, when we say a power raised to another power, can anybody tell me what do we do with those two numbers? A power to a power, we, just like Bebe's kids, that might be, y'all might not get that reference. We don't die, we multiply, right? We multiply those. <laughs> we multiply those, right? So that's gonna be two to the power of three times the absolute value of X, right? Okay, equals two to the power of seven. So now this last line is true if and only if those exponents are true. Now that we got into the same base, this is only true if these powers of these exponents are true. So then we can say three times the absolute value of X equals seven, okay? Hmm. Absolute value equation. So then to do this, let's first, let's isolate the absolute value. So then we have the absolute value of X equals seven by three. So then to solve the absolute value equation, there are two outcomes. It can be a positive or a negative. So then X equals either seven by three or X equals negative seven by three, right? And then we just, let's check this before we submit it on Pearson because we can. Oh, like this, okay. is to check these results. Rusty, dusty, rusty. What I'm gonna do is go to my y equals. I'm gonna type eight to the power of absolute values. If I hit math, go to the right. And number one is absolute value, absolute value of X. Close off the, let me insert a parentheses. value and close off my exponent, right? So I just typed in the function on the left. Now, when I, when I submit these results, the output should be 128 for both of them. So to the left of the clear button, I'm gonna hit variables. I'm gonna go to the right to go to Y variables, number one. And number one, again, to call on my function, I'm gonna put in seven by three. We should get 128. And then I'm gonna put in negative seven by three. confidence in submitting this result is being able to check your work like this is what minimizes the amount of work that you have to, the amount of number of times that you have to retake an exam. Because the exam, you don't get feedback until the end, right? So we got those two results. So thirds and a negative seven by three. Uh, negative seven by three. This got to go. Let me check the zoom really quickly. Do you guys are going over there in the chat? Let's see what we got. Uh, so about I think that was about the baby's case. Let me see. And we got people in the waiting room. Let's go ahead and get them. Uh, let me do that real quick. <laughs> yeah, well, you can get it. I know this stuff is what it is. It's fine. You know, just, just trying to be as light as possible. Because uh, math, you know, the nature of it is already just, it gives people, it just runs amok on people so much already by itself. Uh, I think I got him already. You trying to leave us? It ain't time to go. Let me hit save. Come on. We're throwing temper tantrums. I mean, it's not throwing a tantrum right now, but sometimes it definitely throws temper tantrums just for like no reason. And like every time my technology throws a tantrum, I'm like, we must be Mercury retrograde. I, look, I go look it up and I'm like, sure enough, we're in Mercury retrograde. I don't know what that means or this, that, or the other. I just know that when things are going left, nine times out of 10, <laughs> it's Mercury retrograde. Okay. Um, I think we're good there. The live looks good. We're going to hop back here. Okay, let's go on to the next question. 
The following equation involves a single log solve the equation, right? Okay, so, so to solve a log, a log equation, we convert it to an exponential. That base, that base 27 of the log, we could swing it to the right and it could become the, the base of the exponent. So then long story short, this one is gonna be X equals 27 to the power of a negative two thirds, right? We can use calculators, right? There's nothing that says that we can't use a calculator. So again, if we swing that base of the log to the right and have it become the base of the exponent, then we'll get something like this, 27 to the power of negative two by three, Close off the exponent, hit enter. I'm gonna hit math as a fraction. Uh, simplify your answer, let's go with one by nine. If, if I need to write that out or if anything is not clear, just let me know and we can talk about it. Else, I'm gonna move on. Okay, same thing here, right? We have a log uh, equation. Base of the log to two, it swings to the right. We're gonna have the absolute value of X equals here. Um, two to the power of three. So then two to the power of three is what, eight? So then plus or minus eight. Now, if I need to write that out, I will. Um, let me show you how to check something like this before we submit it, right? So suppose we wanted to check these results uh, before we submitted on an exam, right? So, and I'm working on my calculator. But something like this, what I would do, this is just me, you don't have to do it this way. I'm just with everything that I share, these are all just suggestions. This is not like an end up. This is not, these are not the only way. There's always other ways to do things that are correct. Um, I'm just showing you that it's possible. You have to get intimate with the information to find out what works for you. Um, okay, so what I would do here, I would type the log again, math with the absolute value of x, right? And then to get that base two, because again, if we, don't, if we don't account for that base two, the base of the common log is base 10. So we got to use the change of base formula. We got to say divided by the log of two, right? To do the change of base. So we typed in the formula. We're going to call on that function that we just input. Now let's test when, if we put in negative eight on the left-hand side, the output should be three. So I'm going to go ahead and do my negative eight and then go ahead and test my positive eight, okay? Gonna go with it. We're gonna check the answer. You saw me do something like this. Now, if you really want to be thorough, you any anytime you work a question in my class, hopefully you have a homework notebook. You should you should be logging this up. If you have a neat organized homework notebook where you know you have your section titles and headers, you have a copy of the original questions with your supporting work and your final answer in a box. The more neat and organized you are, when you get on like exams and things. Like, if you already have it written down, you can just flip straight to it. And a lot of times it's worked the exact same way. You just replace the numbers out. You see what I'm saying? Like, but that, that involves being neat and organized, you know, and that way you can, I mean, you learn it. You know, once you get it like once or twice, again, this is a game of like pattern recognition. You just don't want to get fooled by the same question twice. It's okay to miss it and get it wrong. It's just, do you get it wrong before the exam or on the exam or, after the exam is like even worse because then now, you know, that's that's a different, that's a, it's a whole different state. But before the exam is the ideal place where you want to make your mistakes and get past it. But everybody's wrong, right? Solve for X. Let's see. Okay. So for this one, we can't get them to the same base. So we would take the natural log on both sides, right? If we take the natural log on the left, that X goes in front, we're going to have X times the natural log of four equals the natural log of 15. So then we just divide by that log and I'm gonna show it right here, all right? So then long story short, it's gonna be the natural log of 15 divided by the natural log of four, okay? If I need to write that out, you have to stop me. Otherwise I'm just gonna power through. Type an integer or decimal around to four decimal places. <gasps> okay, now if I'm rounding this to four decimal places, that means I'm considering that first four, right? It's 9534. If I look to the number to the right, there's a second four. That second four says to stay the same because it's less than five. So that means the final result is going to be 1.9534. Okay, 1.9534. Okay. Write that out or go back and show any details or, you know, because you have to stop me. Otherwise, I'm just going to power through. 
All right, this one I am going to write down, okay? This one has a few, few steps going on. B from here. You know, hopefully you're doing what you need to do so that February comes, you can enjoy yourself. I'm, I'm, oh, hang on. Back to the idea of like play hard, work hard and play hard, right? But you can't play hard if you haven't worked hard. Not really. You can, but that leads to like all sorts of trouble. Work hard and, you know, things are in order. You can, you have, a greater chance of being able to do what you want to do. It's not a guarantee, but your, your odds of success are much greater. Uh -oh. Okay. And we only got about 10 minutes left, guys, right? And then you can enjoy your weekend, do what you need to do. Uh, hopefully you're making your way through this material. You're finding support, right? And you're doing what you need to do. You know, get the, get the stuff submitted, but just know that sooner or later, you're going to have to like sit down and showcase, you know, what you've been doing in the testing environment, right? And you don't want it to be at a crucial moment. I've, several times I've had students like leave and come back and they'll be like, oh, Mr. Pfeiffer, you were right. I thought, I thought that when I got out of this class, I was never gonna see this stuff again. I started my, I got in, I went into a job interview. The first thing they gave me was a math exam. I was like, yeah, I tried to tell you, you thought I was like making it, you thought I was making it up. I was like, no, I'm not making it up. Like <laughs> I've been doing this, you know, at least 10 years, maybe almost 15, something like that. So anyway, uh, let's see. Let's start by getting a copy. So I just say that to say, do what you got to do to get the stuff submitted, but just just don't get caught sleeping or lacking, right? If ever there was like a surprise, this, that, or the other, just make sure you're getting this content. Like right? you don't want to be caught sleeping. That's not a good look because then sometimes like they they go back and try to take take stuff away, and you don't want to have to try to be having to deal with this stuff again, when, especially if you don't like it, right? So let's get a copy. We have three times two to the power of four X minus one plus six equals 17, right? So now if we're solving for X, we're gonna move things away from X. Let me move this down just a little bit. We're gonna move terms away from the X, okay? So we're gonna work our way from the outside to the, to the inside, right? Because, yeah, that's just how we're going to do this. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, and we're going to work on the left and right side of the equal sign. So I'll identify that with something more subtle. Uh, you know. left side versus the right side of the equal side. And again, this is just based on the equal sign. Whatever we do on the left-hand side, we also have to do on the right-hand side, all right? To keep it balanced. First, if we're gonna move things away, we're gonna move the six first, right? Um, I didn't mean to, I didn't, I didn't use the color. Six from both sides of the, from the left and right side of the equal sign. Okay. Equal sign. What is that? Eleven on the right. On the left, a number plus is opposite as the zero, and so we're left with this three. Here, let me just copy it. Three times this is what's left. Now, again, we want to use the inverse operation. So if we're moving things away from the X, the term with the X, we have this three times, right? We have this three times this, this exponent. So what's the inverse of multiplication? How do we undo multiplication? The opposite or inverse of multiplication is division. So we divide both sides by three, right? A number divided by itself is one, okay? One times anything is itself. So then on the left, we are left with what? Just that two. 
x minus one on the right, we can leave it as 11 by three. Okay. Out of the exponent, the to undo uh, exponential processes, we take the log or natural log on both sides. So the inverse of exponential is natural log or log. Right. Okay. Allows once we take the log of the exponent, that allows us to get the exponent out of. Right, the log allows us to get that power out of the exponent. The right, we're gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna go ahead, well here, let me just write it just to be the wrong. So then now we have four X minus one times the natural log of two. Man, this weather today is gorgeous. Like the past couple of days, I'm like, yes, spring is in the air. I'm back, baby. <laughs> 11 by three, right? Okay. So again, this guy here, this is just some number. Right, this natural log of two, this is just some number. So we got a number times this binomial equals some other number. So if, we, if we're moving things away from the X, we just what? What do we do with this number? If we're multiplying that number, we want to undo it, then we divide by that number. So we're just going to divide both sides by that number. That number in this case is going to be the natural log of two. The number divided by itself is one. Okay. Here. Stage minus one equals, we have this natural log 11 by three divided by the natural log of two. You see the time? One more. We add one on both sides. So we can say like plus one and plus one. Number plus is opposite as zero. We get 4x equals, we got this natural log 11 by three, natural log of two plus one. And then I could divide both sides by four, but that's the same as multiplying by one over four, right? So multiplying by one over four is the same as dividing by four. I'm gonna multiply by one over four, but it's the same thing. Or you can just divide by four. Or short, let me see. That one by four x, or we can just leave it, I guess. On the right, we have one by four times oops, times we got this natural log of eleven by three over the natural log of two plus one. So this is the exact result. And then we use a calculator to get an approximation. So then X is approximately. And so the instructions say, do not round into the final answer, then round to three decimal places as needed. Okay. So I think this is gonna be it for me guys. I think I'm, I was, I was lucky I was able to get start class essentially on time. <laughs> so I think I'm doing good today. All right, so then we got this, uh, I'm gonna do my one by four times log of, of, now parentheses, my use of parentheses here is key and it takes practice. Natural log of 11 by three. Again, whatever we practice, we get really good at. If we practice complaining, we get really good at that. If we practice focusing, we get really good at that. Whatever we practice, if we practice talking, we get really good at that, you know? If we practice finessing, we get, I don't even know if y'all still use the phrase finessing, but whatever we practice, we're gonna get really good at, right? So what do you practice? Right? You know, you practice being resourceful. There's nothing wrong with being resourceful. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, just, just, I just want you to be aware that whatever we practice, we get really good at. Okay. I'm confident in my use of parentheses here. Okay. Hit this. So then we got to say three decimal places now. If I'm doing three decimal places, that means I'm looking at my eight, right? To the right of the eight is a six. That six tells me I need to round up because it's, it's five or greater, right? So instead of doing 0.718, we need to do 0.719. So we get approximately 0 
719. Some of the other like projects, I don't know if anybody does like graphic design or like drawing or cartooning. Can you make like a, write a story? You can write a short story, just like where somebody, you know, may or may, just some kind of story related to it. something applying a concept that we've talked about. That's another thing. It doesn't have to be regular research. I just want you to take what we've been talking about and see what can you create, create out of it, right? Maybe we can do like a, um, not a, I mean, like a showcase and we can have like, you guys be the judges, but do like polls for like the submissions on one day. Like maybe I'm thinking like when we first get back after spring break would be ideal. Um, that's one opportunity. Then maybe a second time, depending on how it goes, we might be able to do it again. But just, you know, just choose a topic, create something, apply it to something that you're able to, something that you're good at. And we can do a showcase to have maybe like a first, second, and third prize and an honorary mention or something like that. You know, I'm open to it. Okay. I'm open. Okay, so let's see. Let's look at the original really quickly. And again, all the stuff that you see me writing, you can pull a copy from um, Blackboard. Uh, just because of the interest of time, I'm not gonna check it. I'm just trying to submit it on Pearson. I'm 719, 0.719, cross my finger, and God is good all the time, <laughs> and all the time. Okay, all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna put a pin in it right there. We're gonna hop back over here. Let me go ahead and share a copy of this stuff that I was writing with you all, so that you can access it later. Let me share, it's in the box, uh, not calculus, this is spring. Uh, these are answered homework questions. So folder number three, and that's a good location. So in there. Okay. So when that bar finishes loading, you'll have a copy of all the stuff that you saw me writing. And if there aren't any burning questions, we're going to end the session here. And from one beautiful mind to another, enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Play hard, work hard. Work hard, play hard. Okay, guys, take care. I'll see you next week.